Hey everyone, today's going to be a video showing you different foods I've opened in the past and I'm going to tell you what kind of canned foods the best stuff to buy for long term and what in my personal experience here, all this food behind me, above me, I'm going to talk about all the food and what held up best, what didn't really hold up, what's the best stuff to prep, what's the best stuff not to what kind of stuff will only last a few years, what kind of stuff will most likely still be edible after 10, 20. Now, I do not encourage anybody to eat expired food unless it's an absolute emergency. But today we're going to talk about what will most likely still be good after many years past the date. All right, everyone. I just detached the camera, and I'm going to show you around in here all the old food I've collected over the past couple years. I've been making this type of video for over three years on YouTube, and I've created quite the collection here. If you look at some of my videos just a year ago, this whole backdrop was pretty bare. It's because I've been getting all my canned food out of storage, and I'm going to show you what I have on all these shelves. Oh, the motion sensor light came on. That means the cat's coming downstairs. All right, so we're going to start on the top shelf and then we're gonna go down a little bit first thing up here those are a whole bunch of collectible Mountain Dew containers from 2008 they're all completely full those I found during a salvage job on my other channel I didn't show myself finding them but it came out of that truck I was taking all the debris out of in Vermont someone left all their belongings in an old snack truck in the middle of the woods but anyways we open one of these up the Mountain Dew still tasted good, but it was completely flat, despite being in, a, in an aluminum container. Usually soda that's in a glass container, unless the seal somehow breaks, usually holds its carbonation for a very long time. If I open this Mountain Dew right there, it probably wouldn't taste good, but it would probably still be carbonated. Anything in a plastic bottle, like over here, these drinks, plastic believe it or not, is actually porous to an extent. It will evaporate out of it throughout the decades, and they lose pressure. That will be flat in probably five years in most cases. Glass stuff, it's always great. I made the video here of the 7-Up a few years back. That still had carbonation. It also didn't taste that bad either. Colas, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola... They always taste really gross after a decade or two, but they always hold their carbonation. Any dark soda does not hold up well. And as far as beer, they all tasted really good. And all this stuff here is from the 70s and 80s. When we opened them up, they all still tasted pretty well. Now, we have not opened up some of the other stuff here. This is all for maybe future videos, but... This right here is dehydrated fruits. We have opened up some of those in the past, and I can't believe they held up. This was one of my earlier videos on the channel. These right here, these three cans, these are apple nuggets. I put them into a pot of water, boil them on the stove. Same with the prunes. Those tasted really good, and that stuff here is from the 50s or early 60s. It dehydrated stuff really held up, being in a can and all. Now, I want to do this in a little bit of a better order. So, we did all that stuff. Right here is a Lithuanian MRE. These are a good thing to prep. Those things will hold up a long time. MREs. These dried beans, we didn't try cooking those yet. Right here is some pasta from the 1950s. I was disappointed that it came with a little plastic toy. I thought it would have been at least a little metal trinket for the 50s. But yes, this went rancid. It came in this box, which has no air seal whatsoever. That is not a food that will taste good after long-term use or long-term storage. This seasoning right here, it tasted bland. Didn't taste like much of anything. But back to this. I do still believe it would have some sort of nutritional value, but even 20 years old, macaroni and cheese, it has gone rancid. 
These MREs right here, I actually have a bunch of. These are the cheapest things to buy currently on the market. You can get them on Amazon.com for $45 per case, which is usually 10 meals in one case. This right here, we haven't opened the Blue's Clues yet, but we did open this one here, and this had gone bad. It was not good at all. Things that come in glass containers seem to hold up very well. I found this in somebody's pantry during their estate sale, and believe it or not, despite it being opened, who knows at what point, it still tasted good. And this product here, I believe, was the 80s or maybe late 70s. This is one thing you never want to prep. Anything with tomatoes in it. Tomato sauce, crushed tomatoes. Tomatoes are acidic, and it will eat its way right through the can until it evaporates, and you just find like a hockey puck-looking thing in the middle. That is, if bugs didn't get to it. Things like corn, that holds up extremely well, and I would probably still eat that after 10 years. Asparagus, not so much. Definitely maybe 10 years or so. We haven't opened this yet, but we have opened lots of asparagus. This is also unopened corn. We'll open that up at some point. So corn, I opened up a container once from the 1930s. That's probably my most popular video on this channel right now, and it still looked all right. It had a lot of lead in it. Back then, they would seal the can with lead, which eventually leaches into the food over the decades. It probably wasn't much of a problem at the time, but considering it sat in that container for like 90 years, 85 years to be exact when we opened it. Right here, pork and beans does not hold up. I've realized baked beans, beans in general, usually don't hold up very well. I opened Butch's baked beans, a couple containers of that, from the early 2000s. It held up horribly, but also that was in someone's garage. It went through every single freeze and thaw cycle. So that may have played a huge role in it. Fish, especially sardines, it usually holds up really well. Sardines, that stuff will be around for the decades. It's preserved in salt, which really helps. Now here's an asparagus can. Well, this one we didn't open either. But I know we opened that exact same type in an older video, The Pride of Illinois. Fruit, you never want to be prepping fruit for long term short term definitely have a, always have a good supply of stuff like that on hand but if you plan on not being able to circulate it after five years this stuff turns rancid fast almost every container of fruit i've opened on this channel it looks like motor oil when it pours out of the can it looks like it's literally turning into oil Again, corn always looks perfect when we open that up. Corn would probably be a go-to thing. Now, all these containers here, I just collected over the years. These, I never actually opened, except for this one right here. Those are still in there. I left them right in there. They're absolutely covered in mold. Pretty gross. But crackers, if they're in a tin like this, those will hold up for the decades. I've opened a lot of sea ration crackers, which surprisingly didn't taste too bad. We got them right here. Some sea ration crackers and candy. That stuff held up really good. This was really nasty, the mayonnaise, when we opened that. Again, bananas, they look like motor oil coming out of there. Grasshoppers, that's a bit weird, but they didn't seem that bad. That was really nasty. Coconut was nasty. This, I believe, was not the worst. Emergency drinking water. This, the lead was off the chart when we opened that up. Right here is still one that's unopened. Pecans, they went rancid. Soup, that doesn't hold up that long. Sturgeon, that was actually really gross. That was under a lot of pressure. Again, glass jars. This still tasted all right when I gave it a little taste. It's something about glass jars. It, Nothing can get into it. Look at this. 
we opened this on the channel, and I'm not the original opener of it. And this has been sitting down here for another few years. This stuff in glass jars just holds up. Powdered baby food from the 80s. That stuff mixed up, and it was pretty good. Powdered anything will hold up for the decades. Look what I got right here. These were all pretty good. Prospect's, Prospector's Biscuits was basically crackers. Held up really good. This right here, it made in everything, but it tasted pretty rancid. I would assume it would probably still have a beneficial value, but unless it was life or death, definitely wouldn't go for that. Again, that was a little bit gross and rancid. Cracker Jacks, those didn't hold up very well. These golden, gut, golden butter bits... They were off, but not the worst thing. This, I was amazed. This, at the time we opened it up, was like 95 years old. This was produced back in the 1930s. It was dry soup mix with dehydrated vegetables inside it. It wasn't a can of soup. It was dry. These days, you'd buy it in those uh, mylar... Bags, you know, the envelopes usually get two of them inside a box. That would probably be the modern day uh, equivalent of that. This right here was like radioactive green when we opened it up. Really gross. We got some more Butch's products here. Baby food in the glass jar holds up too. Stuff like this, I don't know if it's traffic driving by, constant vibrations of life going on while this was in the can for a few decades. That soup, it like somehow solidifies into one piece. You can't even see the noodles a lot of times. It just slides out looking like a big piece of gelatin. I actually have not tried opening vintage coffee yet on this channel. Jello products hold up quite well. Let me skip over here to some Jello. We've opened up quite a bunch of old gelatin products over the years. And the oldest one being right here. This is not the one we opened, but it's identical to the one over here. I believe this is from the late 50s. And it did not solidify as much as it was supposed to, but it still tasted good. It just had a darker color because some of the gelatin had broken down over the years. Now, this right here was discontinued a long time ago, but in the 60s, that was actually pretty popular, making jello salads. So that's why they had celery flavor. They had, oh, they had all kinds of different weird vegetable-related flavors that they all discontinued. But I was so happy that I got to try that. I actually, the reason I have two of them here is because I bought them both on online auctions. The first one I bought, I could tell... Hey, this wasn't stored correctly. Maybe extreme temperature fluctuations or more likely high humidity. It destroyed it. It came out of the little envelope in there, black, and you could tell it rotted. It still tasted okay, but it did not solidify at all. So I went ahead and I bought another one. It still had quite good color. It solidified pretty well. So I actually got to try something from the past. It's pretty good. And I used to also do comparison videos with stuff like this. This right here is from the 1980s. This one's brand new. It probably still is in date right now. They both tasted perfect. I believe I actually like the old one better. And this was something else I never actually tried. I was going to. It just never happened. And here, see, I have a bunch of pretty nice can openers. The quality is really good on these older... Well, that one's from the 80s. Not sure about this one. This feels a bit cheaper, just holding a handle. Compared to this brand new one that would come from the dollar store, you use this in the kitchen, you'll probably break it within a year of use. Over here, I remember we opened this thing up. It had eaten its way right through the bottom of the can. It was like shriveled up, and it still had all the ribs of the can indented in it, but it shrunk by like half. That was kind of cool. If it would have sat for another decade, it would have been completely dried up. Molasses, that held up a real long time. This right here, when I got that, it was opened. That was actually my first video I ever made on this channel that was food-related. It still 
looked okay and smelled all right. I couldn't believe it for something that old. But then again, I've also opened peanut butter from the 50s. Where is that? We'll come across that at some point, I'm sure. Syrup also lasts a real long time. Look at these peanut butters. Old C rations, probably from the 70s right here. This also held up pretty well. So you got this red kettle here by Campbell's. If you look inside it, it had two little cans of dry soup mix. Lemon candies, those held up a long time too. These are seeds from the 1930s, I believe they were. Maybe they were a little bit newer. Nothing grew. I've tried doing old seed videos a few times. Nothing ever grew, really. Here's some old cleaning products. I made some of those videos in the past. Oh, there's a chocolate-covered ants. That chocolate went rancid a long time ago. And behind it is an MRE from the 90s. Those were still pretty good. And right here, this was stewed horse meat from Russia. I wanted to give that a try. And somewhere, I don't know if I saved the can or not, we tried old beaver meat from Russia. Here is from the 1950s. This was bananas and potatoes. That right there, those potatoes from the 1960s, I couldn't believe it. They looked almost perfect. They kept their shape. They were still pretty firm. They didn't fall apart at all. But the lead was off the charts inside the can. This right here tasted like cardboard. That was really gross. The instant mashed potatoes. Well, at least they still mixed up pretty well. These do not taste like ginger ale. But at the same time, they didn't taste bad. Just kind of tasted like sugar water. The ginger flavor completely went away. That's going to be an upcoming video, the potted meat. We actually just filmed a video of, right here, Vienna sausages. We just opened one for those from the 80s. It's not down here in the room right now because I'm actually still soaking it, cleaning it out. But those are all new products. I'd say these things here would probably hold up a few decades based on what I saw today. But it's never... I never know how it was stored. This literally smelled like dirt. That didn't hold up at all. But look how rusty it is. I doubt that was stored correctly. That was probably going through every freeze and thaw cycle for the past 40, 50 years. Again, sardines. Those always seem to hold up really well. Spam. Because most people believe it's like a survival food. It's not. When I got it, a container of that from the 80s, it was rotting. It smelled. It actually lingered in this room for three whole days. That reeking smell would not go away. It didn't even make it better that I burned it. These we actually found on the side of the road recently. Look at that. It says Burger King. Maybe we'll open these up and... A video sometime. Yep, that was in a box of free stuff on a trip to New Hampshire a couple weeks back. This right here held up good, but that that's hard candy. It can't really go bad that easily. That came out of this gigantic container. Popcorn holds up really well. Unfortunately, I don't know where you'd find it in a metal can anymore. That's from the 50s. That one right there is from the 60s. Where does it say that? I know it says it in some really strange place. All right, right here. No, that's not it. That's the patent. It's absolutely tiny. See it right there? 1961. It's absolutely tiny. But what was really cool about... I did a bunch of popcorn videos a few years back, and... You see this? Popcorn was much smaller back then. I compared it to today's stuff, and I guess years and years of selective growing had made the popcorn bigger and the shell thinner. Back then, it was a gigantic kernel, and you didn't get much in it. So, the point of today's video was to show what would be the best thing to keep in your pantry for long term. 
I'd say a lot of vegetables, corn, carrots, those kind of things seem to hold up. Potatoes seem to hold up. And considering today's canning methods don't use lead, hopefully newer modern cans, them not being as strong, they'd still be able to hold up. I'm sure they would for a good decade as long as, like here, if I was gone and the power went out, this place would absolutely freeze solid. I would have so many disgusting containers popping all over the place when we get down into the like negative 30 in the winter time. Wouldn't it be pretty. But I've thought about that for a long time and I'm going to show you what's in my pantry and show you what I've done. Then I'll show you over a couple other things that I've been keeping in here. Over here is more work-related things and post-10 related things, which is my other channel, which all takes place out and about. I don't film anything here for it. But here, when I'm ready to go out and do stuff, I just simply grab some freeze-dried food, which is a great snack. Got my protein shakes. If I'm feeling a bit tired, I'll grab an energy drink. This right here will be used on like trail cameras and stuff. So an animal doesn't, you know, I always see animals sniffing the camera because they can obviously smell me. Look at this, usually 10 bucks, usually 13 bucks. Always searching for these great bargains at Walmart's discount shelf. Look at this, this was half off. It's a big hanging lick to attract things. This year, I think being aware of preserving food, growing a garden, all that kind of stuff is especially important because this year there's a lot of drought going on and that's going to drive food prices up as you won't be able to do a lot of growing and I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep growing stuff around here. It's been so dry around here we haven't been able to have fires or anything. It's even bringing bears closer to the house we've, we've never had before. So I can't throw anything out. I'm I'm used to throwing out my scraps and all that kind of stuff. But I've had a bear break into the trash a few times. I was able to solve that very fast. I just put some um, ammonia cleaner. Just put like a shot glass worth of it in every single bag you throw out. Then this first time the bear breaks into it, he's going to smell that. And he, they always stop going through it. Alright everyone, so this is my pantry. This is underneath the stairs. This is not part of the kitchen. Slowly over time, every time I go to the store, I'll buy like one extra tray worth of food. But it's a manageable amount. I'll be able to circulate it before any of it goes bad. But everything in here I planned on, these are things that won't perish that fast. Right here are boxes of humanitarian MREs. One of them is different. One of them is a little higher quality. Well, let me show you. Right here we got protein shakes, which will probably go bad within two years, but I go through that stuff pretty fast. Let's get a light on. Right here, things like this will hold up for at least five years. Soups, at least five years. Evaporated milk, probably only like three. Peanut butter, I don't know, it's in a plastic jar glass jar peanut butter so expensive i'd say glass jar peanut butter would be set for a few decades i don't know about that but looking at things like this the stuff i would still eat that stuff if it was in an emergency after 10 years here's a bunch of chicken and stuff gotta have some of that up here's a lot of fruit i always eat a lot of fruit that's why there's a lot of this around Fruit, like I said, it turns to like, it, it'll look like motor oil after just a decade. It seems to go through its phase around five years. I remember I bought these, uh, you ever hear of the kind of fruit called Longins, Logans, something like that? I, I got it from this Asian supermarket, and when I got home, I was like, hey, this tastes a little fer fermented, like it might make you a little bit drunk. Look at the date. It said 2014, and that was only a few years back. That was like five years at the time, at least, expired, and it was still on one of their shelves. 
still tasted good. I still ate it, but I could tell it was going through that transition where it would be really nasty. And stuff like this from experienced baked beans, got to be eaten within five years. But then there's things like this. I believe after a few decades, this would still be edible. Not this because it's in a plastic container. Also, apples, they're acidic. Just like, you notice I don't have any tomatoes here at all. Tomatoes, tomato sauce. Like, if you buy ravioli in tomato sauce, it's going to eat through the container after, within a decade. Stuff like this holds up very long time. This stuff, I actually plan on leaving here in case of an emergency. Not a big fan of Spam, but I'm cheap, so I bought Walmart's brand of it. Sardines hold up a really long time. The only thing I don't like about sardines is I don't like eating the bones. So I got this. This is not sardines, I know, but it's boneless. I love the taste of fish. I don't like bones in my food. And over here is a water bottle with a filter inside it. I could just scoop up water from a muddy puddle if I even had to, or a body of water and that would filter out almost all bacteria and parasites. All right, everyone, so I'm still gonna go on in this video. I'm gonna talk about some other things I have stored in here, stored in this office area here. I'm gonna talk about different items I have. But for anyone who just clicked on this video to hear what I had to say about what holds up a long time, basically anything that's in a Mylar bag or a can that's dry. That's like the number one thing if you want it to hold up for like 50 years, it's survival food. But on the other hand, if you're worried about an emergency, things like corn, potatoes, anything I showed in that pantry, I would probably eat it if it was an emergency after 10, 20 years even. I would, but I wouldn't do it if it was an emergency. You don't want to get sick? You don't want to try that? I don't encourage anybody to try old food. What we do here is just to try to show you what's in it. And I see a lot of people are interested in that suddenly. I see the channel has got an uptick. We probably gained 60,000 subscribers in my absence. We don't upload much to this channel in the summertime. But in the wintertime, I'll be probably making more videos like this. So... Canned food. All right, let's move on to a few other things. Now, right here on the box of MREs, you will see it was packaged in 2019. It was inspected this year. A lot of people will assume these are expiration dates. I've seen people, especially on like eBay sellers, it'll all say negative review. It came expired. These things don't have a expiration date listed on them. It has a date of production and an inspection date. Typically, you can go beyond that five years or so, but I know from opening up all these kind of old military food, even ten years, it seems to still be good. And I've ate it ten years old. I've been hesitant about MREs from the 80s. I've definitely taste tested them, but you know... Now, this stuff right here, I found on Walmart's discount shelf. Look, it's all kinds of hot sauce. That's to make food taste a little bit better. That's about to go in there. You know, because if you're sitting in there eating canned corn for like a month straight, it's probably going to get boring. That's to spice things up a little bit. This right here, I typically bring on when I go out on overnight road trips to film things deep in the woods. This stuff's always really good. It's not a thing to be really prepping. It's a good thing to have on hold because if your power went out or something, obviously the milk in the fridge is going to spoil in hours. But this, after a year, is usually still good. You see, February 2023, one mistake I always make, do not leave this in a hot car. It'll be chunky like a couple days after, a couple temp big temperature fluctuations, being in a 120 degree car, it's gonna go bad real fast. 
got a lot of bug spray and sunscreen. I decided to buy a bunch of sunscreen because usually I always get burned in the sun. I don't take care of my skin the way I should be. Right here I have all my trail cameras for post 10. Bunch of them in those boxes. Zip ties to get them onto trees. Got a couple extra memory cards. So this is how my system works. I bring in all my camera lights, trail cameras, and they sit in the top shelf. Top shelf means needs to be charged. It goes into the middle shelf to be charged. Anything on the bottom is fully charged. You see I got the big magnet. That's how I stick them inside of metal culvert pipes and stuff. And I actually invested a whole bunch of these cameras because the layout's good, but I realized this model doesn't have a microphone, which is not a great thing. So if I buy any more of these brand in the future, I will definitely get the one right here, which is the same price, the same everything. Yep, it's got a microphone on it. Now it's really hard to get the batteries out of the compartments on these. Just give it a quick bang against the carpet. It, they all fall out pretty nicely. This right here is minced meat from the 1930s supposedly next year on this channel i plan on growing a big garden for all you guys to see i haven't grown a garden in a few years but i used to do it all the time see i got this thing here it's got 300,000 seeds in it this is about 70 dollars on ebay you see it's in a mylar bag it's supposed to be able to last a really long time supposed to still be growable after a decade because it's in this nice bag for prepping over here i got these at dollar tree because you know they're putting everything on discount trying to get rid of it they were 10 cents instead of 25 cents got a bunch of pretty good things here whole bunch of marigolds marigolds are a natural pesticide it'll keep away the big tomato hornworm and other stuff Here's a little note somebody left me who found one of my trail cameras that was stuck underneath the magnet. It's very nice of them to actually fix the camera after bumping it. Mm. Yeah, everything here, this is like something I found on the side of the road recently. Look at this really old box. This box is like a work of art itself. And let me show you what's in it. When I first saw this, I thought it was something modern. It's not. Things really old and vintage. And I was on the side of the road, the same exact place I got those Coca-Colas. And I have a bunch of plates here for my old nasty foods. Over here's the pet leech. What's it doing? It's almost time for a feeding. When they're adults, they can go 18 months without a blood meal. I'm never doing that again. It's getting too big, and it's a pain in the butt. You can't stop bleeding for days because of the anticoagulant it gives you. Even if you use uh, blood clotting powder, which basically stops it immediately, if you get seriously hurt at any time, that's not going to end well. But I thought that was a cool pet, that's all. Right here, this is in case there's ever, like radiation in the air it's supposed to stop your body from absorbing it i have a bunch of these up in the medicine cabinet these ones here i actually bought just for a cool thing to have on the shelves in here in the office this is unopened too some 1950s popcorn kernels and there's a tiny little container of the same stuff this right here that didn't taste good but i think it also did taste normal yeah, powdered stuff holds up a long time too. But unless it's in like a Mylar bag, unless it is freeze-dried, unless it's a dry powder, I would say you're not going to get 50 years out of it. Unless it's like some very specific things I showed myself like that can of soup that held up 90 years. I have a whole bunch of mason jars up here because i'm going to try doing a bunch of canning myself when i do the garden next year 
gonna make a really big garden. I'm gonna have to get a rototiller to do so. Rip up a bunch of the yard, mix peat moss into it. I just hope it rains enough to be able to water it. With all the water shortages and stuff, I'm actually worried about the wells going dry. Like a third of the forest is dead. Not one of the trees in the property looks healthy. They're all thin, turning brown. Kind of worried about forest fires at some point. I got these books right here. I've never been hunting in my life, but if it ever became life and death, these books would be a good thing to learn. Well, I hope this long video isn't too boring for everyone. Just showing you a little bit of how I do things. These right here are boxes I got because I got them at a good price. But typically in my vehicle, I have one box like this labeled camera gear. I have a box labeled food, you know, anything I need while out filming on a trip. That's what's basically in these big boxes. But these big boxes we only use for off-road trips because we can leave them next to the vehicle and 100 miles away from the nearest gas station or anything. We're like, why? <laughs> no one's going to steal that. But those have to go in the front seat when we are sleeping in the back of the vehicle. These I actually got the other day. It said they're usually seven ninety eight for a two-pack. Discount shelf, $1 each. That'll be good for cleaning, like, dog hair and stuff off of car seats. Inside here is, you know, food for a trip. There's cooktop in there, propane, a bunch of stuff to cook a meal off-road. And this one right here is just luggage and stuff. That's to keep it out of, you know, the rain and everything. This one, the actual food one, because of bears, this actually goes in the front seat itself. And the camera box is what's left outside just to be kept out of the rain. And I have this right here. This is bear spray. That's just in case. At, at some point in the future, I want to go out west and try to do some filming around there. I haven't done much filming around here. It's just been too dry for my typical videos. But I know the middle of the country has been getting a lot of floods lately. But that's just in case we go in an area with dangerous grizzly bears. All we have around here is black bears, which are highly unlikely to attack you. They just run in the other direction.